Darcy, would you be able to do it today? Yes. Great. Thank you. So then the next order of business is approving minutes from the last meeting. Any comments? In general, they might be a little long. I think whoever does it next, if they can use their editing skills better to keep it short, or I think that would be appropriate. You were better than Kevin. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I have a correction. I think we have um, Ross Building's C draft plan under the sector section on reviewing the sector plans, and Evan wasn't here, and I, we didn't have a plan, so we didn't really have anything to review. <laughs> oh, yeah, I see. Oh, uh, yeah. And, and yeah. Okay, so it sounds like we just need to. Cross that out, right? Yep. Okay. I'll edit it out. Anything else, or should do we have a motion to accept? I move. I move to accept the minutes. Approve. Second. Yes. So sorry, I have um, a process thing which I was um, educated about by the town clerk's office. So when we do have someone um, participating remotely, all of our votes have to be done by a roll call because oh, yeah. you can't physically see him raise his hand or not. <laughs> so, okay. um, so everything has to be done by roll call vote when you get to the final. Okay. All in favor. So let's vote then I guess. Okay, so I'll, so I'll start. Um, Dumont? Abstain. Selman? Yes. Drucker? Yes. Rose? Yes. Ross? Abstain. And Ravi Kumar? You have to give us- Yes. Um, so we have two abstentions out of a vote of five, right? So we still have out of six, sorry, so we're good. Okay. Alrighty, great. Um, so now we will invite any public comment. Well, thank you for coming. Okay, so update from sustainability coordinator, Stephanie. I have very little to update on today. So um, just that we um, had an event in front of town hall. I honestly can't remember if it was just this past Monday or last week, because <laughs> <laughs> that's just where my head is. So in any case, but we did um, have press coverage. It was 
because the town of Amherst is included in a report by Environment Massachusetts about communities that are working towards 100% renewable energy. So we were featured along with Holyoke and Northampton, but they are doing these events across the state, so there's other eastern communities that are being featured as well. But um, there is a report that's being released if it's not released already, so once I can go to their site and get it, and I'll forward it to you all. So that was kind of exciting. Great, congratulations. So, yeah. So two of our council, our committee members here were very much um, kind of a point persons for that happening in town. So we, we can thank Darcy and Andra especially. Okay, um, so if there's no other updates, then we can move on to setting the retreat agenda. So, Andra, you provided a handout here. I also sent Stephanie something um, that we could use to take notes on if we wanted to, to do that. I think there's two, in my mind, there's two outstanding questions. One is facilitator. Um, and the other is whether we want to focus the entire retreat on process or whether we want to try to spend an hour or an hour and a half on process and an hour or an hour and a half on sort of setting our follow up work plan agenda. Um, this is four hours, right? Yeah, so yes, but with breaks and other things put in, thrown in. But if we spent two hours on each piece or three hours on one and one hour on the other or something. Um, so maybe first we can talk about facilitators because we did get a few emails of ideas, but I, I must say that I wasn't sure if there was any f sort of final people for consideration. So Darcy actually sent me the only person who confirmed that they could do it. Everybody else sent potential people who could do it, but then who said they couldn't. So um, uh, maybe Darcy, you wanna give an update on who it was that you had a conversation with? Yeah, I, um, I talked to a couple of different people. Uh, one, Russ Vernon Jones was available and willing to do it pro bono. Um, he's done facilitation many times before. He's a former um, principal at Fort River School for 17 years or so. And since retiring, he's been very involved in um, issues around climate justice and um, the um, connection of climate and race. Uh, but that aside, he's just, you know, I've, I've seen him facilitate a couple of times and he's very good. Um, so that's all I have to say about that. He's the only person that we got a, an affirmative response from. And if he's willing to do it, he's the only other person other than myself. Those are your two options. And if he's willing to do it, I think he'd be great. Yeah, are there any um, questions or concerns about Russ facilitating our meeting? Did we hear back from Pat Romney? I haven't heard back from anybody else. Um, does anyone else know Russ? I've met with Russ before um, and attended a meeting with Russ and I think he would be, do a good job. I think I may, would see if, if potentially we could all send him maybe a little, right, you know, it's, I don't think we'll have time to meet with him in the next week, but I, w I would maybe say if everybody wants to send him a short paragraph of like what they hope to get out of the retreat in advance, that may help. Um, 
him with his facilitation, and that way it's everybody's had an opportunity to give input prior to the, the meeting. Um, My, I would think maybe you should, I, I think if you come sort of more to an agreement today of what you want rather than your individual goals, because it seems like that's what you're working on as part of your agenda tonight, that maybe that might be easier than each person sort of saying what they hope to get out. That's just, so you have a collective vision of what it should be about, maybe? I'm just thinking if, if people are sort of in their own, sort of sending something off, it might be easier to come together tonight. Yeah, I guess I was thinking more individually, or maybe, you know, um, I don't know, that could be a bad idea, but I was just thinking if people want to introduce themselves to Russ before the meeting, so he has a sense of who's in the room. Yeah. Not That's, less about the retreat itself, but maybe yeah, yeah. what you, yeah. That totally makes sense. I was just thinking that for, you know, maybe tonight the conversation could be about what you all want to each get out of it. But yeah, an introduction from everybody would be great. Okay. Um, I don't see any issue with asking Russ to confirm he can do the facilitation. Is that something we need to vote on or? Uh, he's the only one who offered, so I, yeah. quite frankly, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I don't know. You could have a vote, but okay. Russ, if you end up watching this video, we are very excited to have you, <laughs> and it's not because you're the only one available. <laughs> Great. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, so let's talk maybe about the agenda. Um, Yes, Darcy, sorry. Um, I think that it would make sense for a couple of us, whoever, whomever are interested in helping Wiz get him organized, maybe meet with him. But I mean, we may want to do something more around the retreat agenda too. So however that evolves, I just think that it would make sense for someone to meet with him before next Wednesday so that he's clear on what we want him to do. And we may decide, you know, when we, after we've talked about the retreat agenda, we'll have more of an idea of what we would want to convey to him. And on, on that issue, I'm just wondering if, if um, depending on what we decide on the second question, um, I don't know, it feels a little bit like we should be talking about our retreat agenda after we talk about some of these other topics on our agenda today. Um, like, um, but if we are not going to talk about anything substantive at the retreat, which would be my preference, then we wouldn't have to do that anyway. Um, so maybe we could just answer that question now. Uh, so I don't, I don't, maybe everyone else knows the answer to this, because uh, I was missing last week. Is, is every member of our committee going to be at the retreat? Ashwin is going to be the only one who won't physically be present, and he's participating remotely, or we're trying to make it so that he can participate remotely. Um, so in that case, as we're looking at setting the retreat, four hours is a long time, but it can also go by fairly quickly. Um, one of my concerns has been that there's been sort of a core group of people who have been here every week that have been having these substantive conversations and we've been make, we've been having these conversations without the full committee present. Um, so I, I might actually disagree a little bit with Darcy um, and hope that we could have some substantive conversations about what we're doing beyond just process because it will be the first time since our first meeting that our entire committee is present and I've been actually very uncomfortable with um, sort of ha how much we've been proceeding in the summer with with this like smaller committees. Um, the other thing is I, I do think it makes sense for someone to meet with Russ before the retreat. The logical person would be our chair. Um, I don't know if she has time to do that. She also has a job and a family, but um, but that I, I agree with Darcy on that. It makes sense for someone to sit down with Russ and, and go through this. Uh, I, ideally, the chair. Yeah, that's 
I, I would volunteer if it's not too many people, I would join you. If, if, I think it also makes sense for Laura to be there, but I'd, I'd join you if, if it works out. I'd, I'd love, love a good retreat um, and setting an agenda. And I'd, I, um, I'd be quite glad to take that time if it works out. Okay, great. And if we do um, focus on the structure, I volunteer to be there too, to represent what I was thinking in the document I created. Does that create, start to create issue? If we, um, I'd have to post it. Okay. Because, so I will have to post it, but as long as we have 48 hours in advance, but you know. It's so up. ideally if we could have a meeting for like next Monday or Tuesday, that would be preferable. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think I would, as someone that has done a lot of facilitation myself as well, I would sort of, I feel less, I, I, what I want to avoid us doing is doing a pre-retreat and then a retreat. And I don't, I think we want him to bring his skills as someone who's facilitated and clearly led a lot of meetings and things in his role as a principal to bring some of that expertise to our group. So I think um, I would like for him to ask us questions. I don't want us to ask him questions. I, I, I want to make sure that we're not trying to predetermine what the retreat should, how it should run, other than what we want to talk about on our agenda and hopefully let him have some space to to be the facilitator that we are hoping that he can be. So my, my suggestion was gonna be that you and I meet with him, me for logistics purposes and you know supporting materials if you need it. Um, but that's what the purpose of this meeting was gonna be and then we wouldn't have to post it, but the posting is not a big deal as long as we have time, but that's just a, I'm just throwing that out there. Okay, um, maybe let's just hold this for a minute and talk about the agenda and then we can see at the end of that how we wanna approach the Russ meeting if we just want Stephanie to talk logistics with Russ and that's it and or, but I, I don't want like, I'm sensing that there's a feeling that if one person meets with him then that one person's agenda is gonna be what he thinks the purpose of the retreat is. Like yeah, no, it, I was saying you and me. No, but I actually I, think that if it's you and me, that's the feeling that is that gonna is right. be gotcha. assumed. Like if I meet at all with him by myself, you know what I mean? Right. Like I feel like if any individual meets with him, that could be the situation that we want to avoid. I, you're the, the chair of this committee. You speak on behalf of this committee when this committee needs to be spoken for. It, I, I wouldn't feel that way if you were the elected chair. Um, I don't really care whether it's just you and, and Stephanie or multiple people. There's always complications with having to post the meeting. You can't like meet in Russ's house or something if, if there's more than one of you. Um, but uh, it seems like it, it should be a fairly simple meeting. I would like to have um, other committee members have more input. I'd like to see Jesse be a part of it. And what do we want to tell Russ? I think we need to have some discussion that's on the agenda first. Okay. So then my original point of let's wait and think. Okay, yeah. so let's do that. <laughs> um, okay, so let's talk about the agenda then. Andrew, do you wanna go through your write-up? It seems like the big question is, do we do just process? or do we do process and content? And I would argue for just process because we have had meetings and everyone has had an opportunity to come or participate remotely and there have been some members who haven't been able to very much and that's a, a shame, but we have work to do and um, I think the decision making should be done at our meetings and we should reserve the retreat for our conversations that we wanted to have at the very beginning 
and, and still haven't had. So my sense is that maybe I'm being optimistic, but I don't think that we would need four hours to go through these items on the agenda. And I am also concerned about wanting to, to do, to get work done. And I, I guess I would love to come out of the meeting with a positive feeling about what our plan is for the next season. <laughs> Um, and so I would, I think we would be a missed opportunity to not at least spend some amount of time um, doing doing that planning for the work we want to get done in the in the fall. Um, I guess I would uh, agree with Andra that. Um, the purpose, I think the original request and purpose for this retreat was to really um, do that which we have, haven't had a chance to do since we started, which is really talk through some structural issues and pace and um, how, you know, issues around whether we should have work groups or whether we should, you know, how we shouldn't whether we should have liaisons. Um, all of what Andra has listed here, and she put times next to issues. So um, I guess I would say put a priority on, on trying to get through those things um, and also on trying to in each topic area is sort of like see if we can come to a sense of the group on each issue so that we will have, you know, we will have accomplished whatever in, the, in that subject area by the end of the retreat. We will be able to say, okay, we covered these four or five areas and this was the sense of the group and so we can go forward and we can get into the meat of the substantive issues in our regular meetings or if we decide to have work groups or whatever. Um, but yeah, I would, I would, I'd agree with um, Andra. Ashwin, I emailed you the document. I don't know if you've seen it. Yeah, I'm here. Sorry, I didn't catch that. I emailed you the document that I uh, yes, yes, I received that email and I've been following along. Thank you. I have a uh, just a practical question that maybe Evan or Darcy or Stephanie, you might know. In a retreat setting in this context, would we be able to break into small groups, for example, or would that not work? That's a good question. I don't really know the answer to that because it is technically it is a public meeting. So I think for the purpose of a public meeting, maybe because it's a retreat, if you came back to discuss what you each discussed in your because I, I mean, in my mind, when I was thinking about how this would go, in my mind, I was seeing you all break out in some discussion groups and then come back and share. And I think as long as you're sharing what you discussed, that's okay. You're saying no? <laughs> if we broke into separate groups, I would... I would imagine that as long as any member of the public could visit 
one of the like if someone stayed go. here and someone into the conference room there and we left the doors open right so you're gonna all probably be or you're gonna be in the same room right i i don't see so. an issue with that i think it would only be an issue if we were if like jesse and and laura and andre and i were gonna go in there and close the door right. and be like exactly. ah, right right that, that, that you can't do right you'd be in the yeah. room and you'd probably break off yeah, into separate groups but you wouldn't leave i would i and then on a separate note, I would just agree that I do think that the process is the priority. That's my sense of, of this retreat. If, and so moving into more substantive work, while I agree that I, I'm feeling urge, I wouldn't, I would be nervous about doing that if it, if it was at the expense of what I believe is the priority, and do to do two things partially, is I think less effective than to do one well. Uh, so I, if that makes sense. Maybe just to add that. I, oh, one second, Arshman. It I, it may be possible to do both, but I. But we'd have, I think we would have, I would vote to prioritize the first. Um, I would be a little suspicious of trying to do both of those things well in this retreat. And I think given that I'm understanding that we are extending the timeline on a lot of our activities to fulfill our mandate, uh, I think that getting a really strong structure for how we work, potentially including subcommittees that can carry forward different substantive aspects of the work uh, would be a great way to put us in a good position. And I would feel really good if we were able to accomplish that. So, so one idea could be that we don't make time for advancing work, but we do provide, I guess there's, I think Evan's point was well made that yes, while everyone could have attended the meetings, it, we, we need to recognize that this was summertime and we've, all prepared some documents and other things. I think if we had a chance, as we're all together, to sort of almost summarize or recap where we are in the process, um, that could potentially be an agenda item to add. If we don't get to it, we don't get to it. But it, you know, I think it would be a helpful way to take the process. What, what I guess I think I'm missing from this is like, how do we take all of this process discussion and turn it into what's gonna make our next meeting awesome. Because we've had five meetings, I don't think they've been awful, but I, so I'm like missing where we're sort of going and how this is gonna improve that. And so I'd like to at least have that discussion sort of moving forward, you know, very specifically. Um, and potentially that goes along with sort of a recap of where we've been and then we're ready, really ready in the next meeting to go and move it forward. What do folks think about that? I think it does fit because it can be a, a review of our process so far and it does make sense since I do think that we all want to have, you know, a, a active participation uh, as much as possible from all the committee members to um, make sure we're all, you know, caught up. Yeah. Question, since I've been out of the loop for a while. Um, so I guess I haven't been in the last several meetings and I'm just wondering kind of where we feel like the gap is. Do we feel like there hasn't been enough space and time and sort of resource for people to pursue substantive work? Like I looked at some of the sector-specific documents, um, 
but I wonder if people felt sort of adequately supported by the rest of the committee in putting those together. Because um, if that's the kind of gap that we're running into, or that's the kind of limitation that we're running into, then maybe we are ready to go ahead and have a substantive meeting around perhaps those sector-specific documents or about certain aspects of almost a draft proposal for next steps or recommendations to the council. I don't know. Or if we don't even think we're at that point yet, people that were doing the sector-specific work felt like they really want to go back to the drawing board a little bit and think about, you know, the more existential questions about this committee in the first place, then maybe that former approach of being more procedural would make sense. So I'm just not, I'm not, because I've been gone, I don't really know which side of that we're sort of tilting towards. Um, so I wonder if anyone might try to help me understand that or clarify that. Uh, and keep in mind that it's hard for me to hear. So if you're addressing me, please like speak into the phone if you can. So I don't know if we have a consensus on that. <laughs> I guess would be my answer. Okay. I'd be interested to hear some different perspectives on that. Then. I guess I would just say that your question goes more to our process discussion because um, I think a lot of what what I'm feeling right now is that we're a little bit stymied by the the committee structure and right so far we don't we haven't really hit our flow we haven't quite figured out how we're going to get our work done how how we want to structure things how fast we agree we would like to move and that's a piece of it that's a piece of you know like are we individually going to do work are we going to work in small groups are we going to have subcommittees, are we going to have associate members? All these different issues we need to kind of figure out in order to get the work done. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm feeling like that's a big part of why we need to have this retreat. Gotcha. So I mean, I feel like just structure really does follow function in this type of a uh, committee. And that's why I might be, I guess I'm struggling to envision that what a procedural discussion that is devoid of substantive content would look like. Because we wouldn't just decide to work in small groups without the purposes of those groups being well-defined. So I don't know, I, I, just, I imagine that what we're calling a procedural discussion will inevitably end up being, hopefully productively, substantive to some extent. Um, that, that's how I just see it shaking out in practice. I don't see a substantive procedural discussion happening. Yeah, Ashwin, I think that's an important point because I think that's where the discussion, these discussions have stymied in the meetings. <laughs> and so I think we need to be open to that being part of the retreat discussion as well. I think, I guess, my concern that I have with focusing only on the... I, I, I guess I would like us to take the lessons that we've learned over the last five weeks and actually really, or five meetings, I'm, I'm actually making that number up if it's five meetings, but I'm assuming it is. Um, like, what hasn't specifically worked well and what can we do to fix that or make it better? I, what I don't want to do is just speak in a way like we haven't had these, like I think we have had meetings so we should use that experience to figure out what would make that be more productive in the future. That sounds to me almost like kind of a guiding question in the background for the whole retreat in a way. Will you, Ashwin, will you state what you see as that guiding question? <laughs> yeah. Um, what have been uh, some of the structural and procedural and those types of issues that have made it harder for us to work and make the best time out of our meetings? And how can we reform 
forward and create alternative structures, such as small groups, such as like substantive working groups, uh, divide up tasks at the individual level, et cetera, and also perhaps make some kind of community agreements about how to navigate meetings themselves to make all this work much better. And we'll end it. So I, I like what Ashwin said about structure following function. I think that's why I'm having trouble with a, with spending four hours just on sort of hypothetical procedure. Um, we have a task in front of us, right? Uh, which is to return to the council um, some goals whenever w we determine we're gonna get them to them. Um, and I think figuring out, to me, and, and maybe this is process, I'm viewing it as substantive, but to me, Figuring out what we want to get to the council over what timeline is probably the most important thing because then once we have that down, we can say, so what do we need to do to, to, to do that, right? What do we need structurally? What do we need procedurally? Um, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm al already a little hesitant about spending four hours on sort of these, some of these process questions. Um, and no time on what's a fairly substantial task in front of us. Um, I, I think that one of the reasons there's the mention that we've been stymied, and I think that, I don't know that I would agree with that completely, I think we're just getting our footing as a brand new committee and a group of people who have never worked together before. I don't necessarily know that we've been stymied, but I think one, one of the issues has been trying to make some decisions about what we're doing without a full committee. Um, and this is an opportunity to do that. So looking through this, I think that there's a lot of stuff on here that's really important. I think some of it honestly could, is, could probably be condensed to make way for a discussion of what are we doing going forward, what's our timeline, and that will help inform a lot of these other questions um, on this list because hypothetical, you know, we keep talking about subcommittee, ad hoc committee, task forces, work groups, whatever you want to call them. Uh, we've talked about them almost every meeting at this point, um, and I, I agree, we're not gonna form them unless we have a reason to, and we're only gonna have a reason to if we have a real discussion about what we're trying to give to the council over what time period. Um, but I, to, to, to spend four hours on just sort of like agenda setting and all of that kind of stuff, which shouldn't take that long, um, especially because I, I don't know if other people have complaints about how the agenda's been set, but I think that it's been done fine. Um, to me, I'd rather see us spend some of that time saying, what are we doing, how are we gonna do it, what's our timeline, what are we looking to return to the council, and what do we need in place for us structurally to get there, um, and what are we expecting our process is gonna be. Um, and I, you know, I think that some of this could probably just be condensed to get us there. Can I, um, I not to complicate things, <laughs> I feel a little bit of a broken record, but I think this is an important piece, is that one of your objectives is to create a climate action plan, resiliency plan, adaptation plan. So in my mind, with that as a big goal, because that really is gonna encompass a lot of the work that you're doing, and it seems to me that if, um, we have an opportunity that's gonna be presenting itself for some funding to do just that. It seems like you're identify, you've already started to look at specific sectors. If you were gonna create a plan, what would you wanna see? How would you want it broken up? Do you want it broken up by these specific sectors? So what would that look like? I guess I'm trying to, like, in my mind, you'd be sort of maybe working to create the skeleton um, outline of what you would want a climate action plan to include and that would be one of those things that like it would can it would include 100% renewable energy and CCA plus can fit into that it would include um, zero energy buildings and that would be part of it it would include transportation and improved infrastructure for alternative vehicles would be part of that and it would also include things like food security and how we're gonna address that. Like there would be sectors identified which to me lends itself to then having these subcommittees created. So that's sort of like the structure to me, creating that, that framework for a plan creates the sort of structure of your work going forward because it, it includes all these other 
all these sectors are subsectors as part of your plan. But that's just how, in my mind, I see it. I don't know. That's I, again, I don't know if that's complicating things or makes sense. But you know, you would, uh, you know, ideally, you'd be working with a consultant. If we get funding, there's going to be a consultant hired to work with this committee and working on creating this plan. So there will be more opportunities to have meetings where these things are discussed more in detail with you as a group. And it's not like the consultant's going to write the plan. The consultant is only going to write a plan guided by what you want to see happen and is going to be working with this committee. Um, so I feel like we got a really good start on that from the work that Laura did and brought the sector plans idea to us. So um, I don't think we're very far from being able to create an outline like you're talking about. Um, I have a, a feeling that Evan's talking about something else. Um, I mean, just to, to jump in there, I actually think that we are, you know, I read your piece for the next part, and I felt like we're kind of getting really close to some, I think we're close to in being on agreement, at least on the very big level. So I would almost suggest we spend the first, after doing an icebreaker and getting to know each other, we spend the first 30 minutes or so just seeing if we kind of agree with, like we've talked about looking at the science, you know, using the benchmarks of 2030 to 2050 and carbon neutrality. We've talked about the sectors we want to look at. We know we want to have sector-specific goals and programs, but we want to engage with stakeholders before we set those specific things. Um, you know, I think that we've actually, I think if we actually spend a little bit of time at the beginning sort of thinking about all the positive things we've already done, we may actually, it may actually serve us better when we start talking about the process piece to figure out where we need to go from there and how this process, how the process will help us achieve that. What are people's thoughts on that? I, one thought I have Mara, is that um, we're, you know, we still have time in this meeting to do some of that work. We still have the sector plan that, well, I don't know. I guess we aren't going to discuss ones that are by people who aren't here. But um, the um, stakeholder outreach document has some of those ideas you just said. So maybe we'll get somewhere satisfying at the end of this meeting. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I'm actually like, then I'm really confused because why didn't we just spend the first two meetings just doing this so that we could have done this? Like, I don't know why we're holding this to a retreat. And then I think the answer is, is because we've tried to answer several of these questions several times in almost every meeting and we make, don't get anywhere. So I feel like if we don't, I just don't, I, I'm getting very nervous that this retreat is just gonna be us sitting here talking about these things that we haven't been able to make progress on because it's a chicken and an egg situation. I guess I'd say we haven't been able to really delve in in our meetings because our agendas are full. Um, and we have made progress on content, um, but have not made progress on these issues. And they're, I think I'm hearing from people, they're really critical to us getting our work done to decide, especially about are we going to work together um, on everything? Or are we going to have group work? So there's no agreement to do a sort of intro to this retreat to do kind of a summary of what we've done so far? I, 
I actually, I'm not sure that that is antithetical to what Andra's talking about. I think it, I think it dovetails nicely. I also think it's a great way to get the people that haven't been able to be in the, sort of bring us all to the same page. I think it serves a lot of really good functions. I think it's a good idea. That, that's what I meant when I said, yeah, that fits. <laughs> I thought you said we were going to do that today. Okay, sorry, I misunderstood. I, I, I think we can, we'll make some progress today, I hope, if we have time to get to the more substantive issues. I guess what I'm saying is maybe the shape of the retreat will depend on the outcome of today and we should proceed and come back to it perhaps with some people who are going to think about it with the facilitator. So I disagree with that. I think we need to finish this conversation. Um, so because we're, we've got to, I think we have to f agree on the retreat agenda today for the most part, at least the structure of it. I have to post the agenda 48 hours before the meeting. And, okay. if you're, and you can't sort of deliberate via email, so you kind of have to come up with an agenda. So I guess what I'm, what, so just to recap what I'm sort of I, hearing from the discussion is we should do an introduction it sounds like there's an agreement that we could spend the first, and this would actually be good for Russ too, if we spent the first beginning of the meeting just recapping what we've done, sort of patting. I think there's a lot to be proud of in this group, honestly. I think we've done a lot of good work, so let's get that out there. Um, and then we can spend the majority of the meeting on the process questions. And then I think the only addition I would add add though is that if we get and if we get them done quick great but I think we have to think as we're going through the process questions make sure we're thinking through how is this going to make our meetings better and what you know how are we going to what problem is this fixing or solving for us moving forward and if it's not fixing or solving a problem then I don't think we should spend a lot of time debating it um, and then I think there hopefully if there's time at the end we can, I think there has to be time at the end to take this into being real next steps as we move forward on our meetings. Because the whole point is that we're making our meetings more productive moving forward, correct? And so, and then if we have time, I think we should, to Evan's point, really start getting into the, getting into things. I think this is just in to confirm what's already being said, but that, and maybe to assuage Evan's fear of, of a ill-spent four hours, but I think any process work that we're doing is in the, any process deliberations we have, that's all in the context of the work we're doing. It's all seated deeply in, in this specific work. It's not, I don't imagine sort of, I think you used the word hypothetical procedures. I don't imagine talking about the pros and cons of different procedures in a vacuum. I think it's very much linked. I think it is unavoidably we will be getting into the meat of this work in a way that will kind of eliminate what I would describe as the awkwardness of this format. I think, I think to me, one goal I would love to see at the end of this retreat is that we are skilling ourselves and getting to know each other to the point where we are better than what is admittedly a slow and awkward format. And for many good reasons, but this is, it's harder to get things done in this setting than other settings, right? Just from a, from a procedural point of view, is that not? Can you elaborate on that? For example, I can't even see all the people I'm talking to. I think quite simply it is a structure that is challenging. It's a good structure and it, it is open to the public and it is either so many positives about it, but there's also things that make it difficult for us to... We're doing a task that's never been done before, well, ever. Right? My, my comment about that would be that you, you know, when you were downstairs 
you could see one another, you were around a table, and there was a more direct kind of um, communication between you. So this is a much more formal setting, so you could agree to meet in a different space. It just has to be publicly noticed. The, the benefit of being in this room is that we can record it and we can project, but we could do that downstairs in the first floor meeting room as well. The recording piece, I don't think that's set up for that, but um, I could at least take audio recordings that can be posted, but I think there is a desire by people to have it in this room um, because of the media access. So, I, you know, I, you would all would have to decide that. I mean, and that's the, I mean, that's the kind of thing I imagine. To me, I, this, I think this hampers the flow of communication, right? And in one way. In one way, it increases it, as in it makes it easier. But in the other way, it hampers the flow of communication. So I think that's something we could, for example, discuss at the retreat and make better. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I just want to figure out what we were just talking about as far as uh, starting off with a review of what we've already done. Because um, uh, that, I would hope, wouldn't take very much time. Because the people that we're talking to are on our committee, and hopefully they've been reading our minutes or... Um, so, I mean, I think it comes I just, I'm not yeah. sure what, I, I understand, it, understand that people are saying that's okay to do, but um, I do not see the purpose of that in a retreat. Um, and so I hope that it can be a very short time. Well, I think, I guess I would actually hope that we can work with Russ to make it interactive and useful in a way. Like, I would almost like to see us put up like where, you know, sort of some of the things we've discussed, like have each of us sort of just give a pulse. How comfortable are you feeling with this part of the conversation? How, like, you know, I think that's the way we could do it that also helps to build awareness of ourselves and where we are feeling and how comfortable we're feeling with, with what we're been discussing, because I agree with Jesse, it's a little hard to know in this forum, like how people are feeling about stuff. Um, and what our goal, like if our goals, well, I guess the goals I've heard for the retreat are getting to know each other. I think everyone would agree that's an important goal. Making ourselves a productive committee moving forward and making, making ourselves a productive group to, so, to address climate change in our community. Is there a goal that I'm missing? I guess I f kind of feel like the, the, the general topics that are in Andra's um, agenda are goals in themselves. In other words, um, should we establish principles? Um, do we want to work on parallel tracks? And these are things that we need to figure out. We need to get a consensus as a group as to whether we want to do this. Um, and this, and it feels like this is the place where we could do that. So yeah, I don't think anybody's arguing that we wouldn't do that. So that's, I think everyone has, I think even if there may not be, a, I think that that's what we're gonna do. So I don't think we have to worry about that piece. I think it's the question of how are we framing it and can we include you know, something in the beginning to bring us all up to speed and make us kind of feel like we can apply these discussions to moving us from where we are to where we want to be. Definitely, yeah. So I just, I, I was just a little worried when you said, and then we'll uh, use the majority of the meeting to work out the process issues. So I, I wouldn't want this review part to be two hours. That would be okay. I, not I, helpful. I don't think that will be the case. So can we set a limit to how, how much time we're going to? to vote to
reviewing what we've already done? So we're, so we're, we're running on an hour talking about our trying to set an agenda for the retreat, which is important, but I worry now that we're going to spend an entire two-hour meeting planning a four-hour meeting. Um, the goal here is to, have an, is to leave today with an agenda, right? And so I think we actually need to start putting words on paper. Andre got us started. Um, I, what I'll say, and, and perhaps I'm in the minority here, to me, we're going to have our entire committee here at a really critical time when we're deciding whether or not we're going to ask the council for an extension and what we're asking them. To me, this is a really great opportunity for us to plan what we're doing. And I think process is an important part of that, but the process makes sense in the context of that planning. And what I would like to see is I would like to leave that meeting saying, okay, here is our timeline for what we're doing. Here's our plan. Here's how we're going to accomplish it. And here's how we're going to make sure it's done effectively and efficiently. And, and that's why, you know, I think that to me, the process is really important, but I think it has to be contextualized with what our plan is, what our timeline is, and what we're looking to deliver. And I think to, that has to come first. What do we actually want to accomplish? What are we looking to do um, over the next several months? And then, okay, now we know that. How can we best make that effective in the context of what we've done so far? And so I think Laura's point or how I've interpreted it is not let's review what we've done in, in like a, let's tell the story of what we've done so far, but let's look back at what we've done over the past several meetings and say, okay, we've been sort of working forward. What have we accomplished? What worked? What didn't, right? Because um, what I'd like to see us spend some time on is, is how do we work effectively? And I, I liked Jesse's point of like being able to look at each other is really useful. Um, this room isn't super conducive to that. I personally like meeting in the first floor meeting room. It loses the media access. There's a cost and there's, there's trade-offs there, right? I think those are important conversations. Um, some of these I don't think we're at a point where we need to talk about just yet. Some of them I think we do. Some of them I hope would be really brief conversations. And so what I'd like to see us do is just put an agenda down, but to me, to discuss a lot of these things absent any any discussion of planning for what we're going to do, given the task in front of us, um, would would be not the most productive use of four hours. Because what I'd like to see the questions be, uh, with all respect to Andra, is actually a little bit more open-ended than these. Like. I, I would love to have a conversation. Some of us have served on committees, some of us haven't. Some of us have served in businesses, some of us have served on organizations. So what have you found to be effective and how can we replicate that in the context of open meeting law and the constraints put on us? That to me is a more useful question than some of these answers that are really yes or no questions. And those are the questions I'd like to go into. Because some of these we've discussed, right? A meeting every week, we've discussed almost every week. We've decided not to do it. Um, what I'd rather say is, what, what do we, how do, how do we work effectively? How, what experience have you had within this committee or others, and how can we use those to figure out how can we work efficiently with the task in front of us? Because many of us, you know, Laura just worked on this climate action plan for Amherst College. She has a lot of experience to bring to the table. Going after a huge project with multiple people over a timeline, but we've never actually heard her talk about, well, what worked in that and what didn't. And that's what I'd actually like to use the retreat for as opposed to just, you know, sh sh should we have a work group? Can I say something? So one of the things that um, I wish we had was a planning group to think forward the way that we're trying to talk about now during our meeting when we should be talking about content and making decisions, um, we're talking about the agenda. And really, I should not have created this. I should have been working with a small group that could hash out some of these issues and bring something that we could come to consensus on more quickly. That's the kind of Thing, that's what I'm feeling is missing. I'm feeling isolated and like the only way to have input is to sort of put all my thoughts on paper and then people have to discuss it in, in this group having not, you know, had it digested at all. So 
that's why it's so important to me to talk about these procedural issues and decide. And maybe we'll come to a decision very quickly. But actually, I think that you just completely agreed with Evan. Like, that's the kind of stuff that we, should, we shouldn't spend the retreat going through these bullet points. We should spend the retreat, what do we wish we had? What would make us meet our goals of working cohesively together, making ourselves a productive committee, and making ourselves a productive group to address climate change in our community? And so I think what we should do is go to Russ with that, that idea in mind. That's what we, those are the goals we want to achieve. These are the things that we've written down that we think are probably things we need to talk about, but let's have that kind of open discussion first and let's figure out what are we, what actual decisions do we need to make process-wise to do that, and then how do we move ourselves forward? What's our timeline? What's our next steps? And if we don't get to all of that at the retreat, the next steps and timeline, I think that that's a part that we can have at our next meeting as a very clear follow-up, because we do have three weeks of meetings in a row at this point. So I think that we could be potentially done with this conversation if there's some agreement there that those are our goals, we want to spend a majority of the time making sure we work effectively together moving forward to meet our goals. Does anyone disagree with that idea? I agree. I just want to share this document with Russ so he has an idea and, you know, this could be what I send him, I don't know, you know. Yeah, I think we share this. I think we share a general uh, agenda. I think um, you should probably share all your sector doc. I mean, in my thought, the things that you each individually produced, there was there was even the discussion about the 90-day goal. So anything that you've produced, I have all of that. I can forward it to him, you know, so he has your documents. Why is that funny? Like, I don't know what. <laughs> it's a lot of paper. But it's, well, no, I mean, I'd forward to him electronically, but, I mean, it would be a sense of knowing what you all have done so far and produced individually and as a group. So it identifies things you're thinking about and working on, and I think it would help him. He, and he may not read it in depth, but I, it's not, I don't think it's quite as much as you think. Okay, so I feel like we can move on from this discussion, but I do think we needed to have it, and I think it does highlight the need for hopefully we will be able to work more cohesively together after the retreat. And we won't have to spend as much time on this, but I think that it, it was an important discussion to have. I, yeah, Evan, sorry. So we need an agenda and something that can be publicly So I posted. have an agenda, Our, yeah. We're entrusting you to take everything that's been said here and put together an agenda to be posted for our, for our meeting and to bring to Russ. Is that what's happening? So what I would like to do is take Andra's list and put it down as these are questions, we, these are thoughts, and there's some things that got mentioned here. Do we want a planning group? Do we want to change rooms? I think we could add those to here. These are just like our brain dump of very specific questions we have. But I think the overall agenda is introduction and icebreakers to get to know each other better some type of way of summarizing our work to date, whether we make that interactive or not, but it would be a short piece. Um, and then how to, to, based on all of that, what are the, what, what do we, what, I liked your idea of thought, how do we work effectively? How have we worked effectively in the past in different ways? What do we think is not working well right now in our group that we could fix? Um, and then using that to identify some very clear sort of decisions probably related to some of these things that we're gonna do in the future to make that better. Then I think that will be the meat of the agenda. And then I think depending on how much time we have left, I think we should spend time talking about timeline and next steps. Does that sound okay? I think it sounds great, and I wrote down something that's almost identical to that, just slightly different words, but I think by, and an agenda doesn't have to be that specific, right? No, it doesn't. In it fact, I was It could be four simple lines yes. that tell the story, and then we, 
it's open. I think that's great. So, Laura, if you could send it to me, if I, if you would permit me to sort of tweak the language a bit just to make it a sort of general topics, because again, yes, what Jesse said is right on. We really don't want it to be too specific. Yes, Darcy. So, where has Andra's agenda gone in this whole process? This will be a part, so it will not be, I, I guess I'm envisioning it at, as almost just having this as a list of questions that we've, that we have as background information or that we want to make sure, you know, these are the things that we've come up with, but we're not going to go through each of these points and say necessarily, but maybe we will. So it's part of the agenda. Things can come up in context. Yeah. So um, we already went through having an offer to have some people help with putting this together. So um, is there any reason why we can't do that? I, I just don't know that. I mean, my opinion from out here is that I don't think you need that. I think you've already come up with an agenda. You don't, why would you need to work further on the agenda? <laughs> Just the idea, you know, that some people should meet with Russ, I, I thought. Well, well that, that's different. That's different than the agenda discussion. That's the facilitation discussion. So I think that's why that I'm we confused. need to work as a group to set this agenda. But you just did. Uh, no, I, I, I don't agree. I don't agree that we all work together to do that. Um, and I think that we still, it would be nice because we started off the meeting with Andra and Jesse offering to meet on the agenda and with the facilitator that we have, we schedule a meeting maybe with Laura and Stephanie to finalize the agenda and also to meet with Russ. So um, I think what, we are going to, so I, my suggestion is that we set up a meeting with Russ, we make it an open meeting, anybody on the committee can come, and we're going to send him this agenda, or we're going to tell him what our agenda is that we just discussed. So I have to post it 48 hours in advance of the meeting. So actually, I just realized if you met on Monday, I'd have to post it like tomorrow. Yeah. So, so if you mean on Tuesday, I have to post it on Friday because the weekend doesn't count. So it has to be business days. So that's the limitation of doing that. How few of us would need to be at that discussion to if not this, If any. you're going to discuss business, I mean, it, Laura can meet as chair and we wouldn't have to post it. As soon as more of you get involved, if I'm there as staff, if I were there with Laura and talking with him, you don't have to post it. But as soon as you get into any other of you meeting, then it has to get posted. So we just spent an hour and 10 minutes hashing out the agenda. We came up with an agenda that I think is vague enough to permit fairly flexible discussion, but enough that we have an idea of what our goals are. We have Andra's list, list of questions. Uh, Laura has taken down some notes on other questions that have come up that are perhaps not on this list. I would imagine that if other people over the next several days think of questions that they were like, oh, you know what, I'd actually like to talk about that, but I forgot, they could send it to Laura and only Laura, and she could add that to her list, right? I, I don't think that there needs to be another meeting on this. My hope was that the, the meeting with Russ would literally just be, hey, here's what our committee wanted to get out of this, here's the agenda, um, and a little bit of talk about structure. Um, I, my personal preference would be just Laura and Stephanie and Russ because I don't think it, it should be a substantive discussion. I think it should just be a structural one. I do not want it to be an open meeting of this committee because it shouldn't be. We just had a committee meeting to come up with the agenda and the questions and I don't want another one because I'm going to be honest with you, I don't have a lot of time on Monday. And I don't want to feel like, oh, if I'm not there, I'm missing some committee meeting where substantive stuff is going to come up. I've attended the scheduled meeting we've had. I've given my input. I think that we need to trust the chair to go and meet with the facilitator and, and, and bring up behalf of the committee. Um, 
and I think that simplifies it too because it allows her to meet with him at a coffee shop for, for 40 minutes or half an hour or whatever and we don't have to worry about a whole bunch of posting a meeting and then questioning, well then anyone can show up and are we gonna have public comment? It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a procedural meeting that doesn't require a group. I agree that we have talked about this too long, and that's why I want a small group to finish this conversation. But Andrew, we don't have time. The, the retreat's next Wednesday. It's just a matter of setting up a meeting. It can be in the context of meeting with Russ. It just needs to be Jesse and Stephanie and Laura, and then with the option to have some creative thinking. That's what I'm really wanting this committee to be able to do, is including people creatively. But that's why we are getting a facilitator, right? I mean, so. Can I just make a recommendation that maybe you take a vote? I'm just thinking yes, that you're, think because you're spinning idea. your wheels, so why don't you take a vote? whether you feel the agenda that's been, maybe read the agenda that you have again and say, is this the agenda and do a roll call vote? I think I, we have the agenda. I'm fine with the agenda. It's, it's the next step. There, there's, there's refining that will happen. And I just think it should involve some, you know, other voices on the committee. I, I just think you and Darcy are saying two different things because yeah. Darcy said that she didn't feel the agenda was set and we are talking about facilitation. Yeah. We're so. saying oh, different I, things. I think neither neither issue is decided and I, I agree that we should, we should have a motion. Um, and I move that we have an open meeting with Russ that's posted for Monday to uh, have whoever wants to come and discuss with Russ the retreat agenda and facilitation. Anyone second it? I second. I mean, a clarifying question, what if Russ can't meet on Monday? Or whatever day. But, but what, I think the only thing we can do with Russ is say this is what we want this is what we came up with in a group. We can't refine the agenda. We can't, because we came up with this as a group together. And th so I, I just don't see why it needs to be anything more than that. We like have a motion on the table. Yeah, we do. I was going to say, you do have a motion. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I have a question actually, Founder. You said we, there's, I, I'm not. We have an agenda, we have a list of questions that we're hoping to answer, we have a facilitator whose job it is to figure out how to make the meeting work and what, and what structure works. What details do you feel like still need to be, that's what I'm not clear on. You said we're almost there, but there's still some stuff that needs to be hashed out, and I'm not clear on what those things are that require an actual meeting. I, sorry, I can't answer that. Let's just, yeah, I don't have an answer. There's unlimited numbers of things that a creative conversation could result in. But I, like, what do you envision, like, if, if we're gonna put Stephanie through the process of posting a meeting and we're gonna have people feel like they have to show up, what is the deliver, like, what's the outcome we're hoping for beyond what we already have? People could come up with a game to play, a song to sing, I, uh, I don't know. It's just an opportunity for participation. But we have a facilitator, to, right? That's the whole point of having a facilitator. Otherwise, why use Russ? I just disagree with your definition of what the facilitator is supposed to do. So, um. <laughs> Ashwin? Yeah, so I, I'm hearing basically what the last comment said, which is that we have, despite there, there, there's, I'm clearly hearing that there's some kind of kinks in this that need to be worked out, and maybe some slight disagreements, but I'm actually hearing pretty broad agreement about what this group needs and how we need to improve, um, and what we have as sort of the main four points for the agenda. 
and the facilitator's job is to come up with specific activities that will, you know, facilitate achieving those objectives in the meeting. I think that what I'm hearing from, I think it was Andra, I can't always tell who's speaking, but I think what I'm hearing there is that there is potentially an advantage in having a small group uh, or some combination of committee members meet with the facilitator to hash out those activities out loud because that will provide an opportunity to give sort of live feedback on it and ensure that uh, at least some folks on the committee are convinced that the facilitator understands pretty well our objectives and that the activities and the types of dynamics that the facilitator is selecting are consistent with that at least sort of passing a fake validity sort of test. Um, I, I don't have a problem with that. I, I personally, I'm, I'm not going to be in town and I wouldn't join it, but I, and I probably wouldn't really feel the need to join it myself. But I do understand, I think, why some folks would want to have that opportunity, and I would uh, support that by voting yes on this motion, even though I probably would not attend such a meeting myself. Okay. Um, thanks, Ashwin. Do so. I don't know what happens next. You, well, you have a motion on the floor, so okay. The motion vote. is to. I think we. So, I guess I am a little concerned that we're assuming Russ is going to be available, and if he's not, how we do this? But maybe you could just say that uh, because. I mean, he could be available on Tuesday, too. Monday or Tuesday would work. I mean, really, potentially even Wednesday morning, which is tight, but Wednesday morning. So I think your motion would be um, to move that um, a small group be available or be able to meet with Russ to discuss the agenda and facilitation of the retreat. That would be my summary of what your motion was. Yeah, I said an open meeting of anyone who wants to attend. So I guess I would want to say that we could have an open meeting with Russ to discuss how we facilitate the agenda that we've agreed on in this meeting. I don't think it's an open discussion of the agenda. I think that's a really important clarifying point. <laughs> well, I, it, no, it right? is I who has to. <laughs> Uh, change the motion. The motion is on the floor. So okay. We have to be clear. Sorry. I'm sorry, Seth. No, no, no. I was just going to say we have to be clear about what the whether this is about the the meeting or the meeting to discuss the agenda and facilitation, which is what I think I said. Yeah. When I was just reading it. Yeah. It and is an open meeting with Russ to discuss the agenda and facilitation open to members of this committee who are available and willing, interested in attending. So it's essentially it'd be a continuation of the discussion we're having now, except Russ would be present. And anyone who could show up at whatever meeting time Russ and Laura are available for could show up. Correct. So this is both about both the agenda and facilitation. Correct? Yes? Yes. Okay. So just, I think that what we're really going to be doing is saying, yes, we trust a small group, because not everybody is going to come, I'm not going to, to t discuss it. And, you know, if there's tweaks to the agenda, fine. We've communicated enough. Okay. Is there any more discussion then? And I'll call a roll call vote. Okay. Dumont? Yes. Selman? Yes. Drucker? No. Rose? Yes. Ross? No. Ravi Kumar? Abstain. The motion passes. 
So Stephanie, you will um, reach out to Russ and see if we can get something set up for Monday and I can let you know what my schedule is for that day. Maybe what would be helpful is to maybe give me a few blocks of time on Monday and Tuesday specifically. Okay. And I can reach out to him. Um, and then also I would need um, the draft of the agenda that you have because I'm assuming that would be used to have the discussion to give him something to discuss from. Or are we using Andres? I just want to be clear. Yeah, I'll send a draft. And Andre, if you could send this in a Word document and we can just, I can add a couple things that we discussed in the, in the meeting to it. So the planning group, I don't know if that was specifically laid out, the space where we're meeting. I think were the two that I noted down. I'd like to um, make another motion that we, um, when putting together the agenda, we include um, Andra's agenda as at least three quarters of our time spent in the retreat um, based on the fact that um, this was the initial reason for requesting a retreat, retreat, retreat um, to really get deeply into the stru structure and pace discussion. Um, so I'm, I'm moving that at least three of our four hours be taken up with um, these issues that she has put together. Any second? I'd like to leave it to the small group. But will a small group be doing that? Because if, if, uh, if we're being sent an agenda, how is that going to work? Our agendas don't have times on them. So we discussed having an agenda with these four items with Andra's list, including the additional ones, as background information or questions that, and try to get to the point of what, how do we make ourselves productive? Should we have a motion to vote that we all agree that that's the case? Okay. So I, I said something earlier and I just want, um, hoping that that was something you were amenable to because I said something, I spoke on your behalf and I shouldn't have. Is it possible that if other people on this committee think of additional questions to add to Andre's list, you would be willing to accept those and, and, and add to the list? Yes, yes, thanks. Okay, so we um, have 30 minutes left. Um, so my suggestion would be that we, I think Darcy, you had um, asked or suggested that we don't talk about CCA today, correct? Yeah, I don't, <clears throat> we're not ready to do that. Okay, so we, is there some official way we move things off the agenda or? Um, you could, okay. just strike it from today's agenda okay. and save it for another time. So let's strike number nine from today's agenda. Um, do folks, I think we should maybe talk about the 90 day timeline for, for a bit, did, or, or do fo of the three items that we have left, I think we could do one. So what, what do folks feel like is the most pressing? Since our um, concern about how long we'll spend doing outreach to stakeholders was sort of the rationale for how we were going to decide on what extension to ask for. I think we should go to that first. Any other thoughts? My, my one thing, um, logistically speaking, right? So again, our 90 days runs out August 20th. Um, so the next 
uh, there's a couple ways we could do this, but my thought is we would probably want to let the council know prior to August 20th whether or not we're going to seek an extension. Uh, the next council meeting is August 19th. We could ask that they grant that extension at the 19th meeting, but I guess as long as we have a, a request in that says we're not gonna meet this, we'd like an extension, um, it doesn't have to necessarily be voted on the 19th. Uh, so it sounds like this, this, our retreat is pretty full up, right? Um, and so the 14th is, a, is, is starting to get a little late if we want to let the, if, I, so here, here's my only discussion I think we have to have, because I don't think we need to do, we need to do this for, for much longer. It sounds like we're going to ask for an extension. We're not getting something to the council by August 20th at this point. The question is, do we want to, is our hope that the council will vote on an extension on the 19th or that we'll just request it by the 20th? Because if we're actually ex hoping that the council will actively take up a measure that revises the order to grant us an extension before the 90 days runs out, then the 14th at like 6.30 is actually fairly late to get something to the council and expect it on the agenda. Um, if we're just happy with saying, hey, we're not gonna make it, we're letting you know ahead of time, here's what we want, but you don't have to vote on it just yet, then that, that's a little bit more cushion. I don't, I don't know if that makes sense, it's all about we want to let them know before August 20th if we're not going to make it. It's do we want them to vote on a revised order prior to August 20th, or is it okay if they vote on it on the 26th or on the 9th? Yeah, I, I suppose we can just ask them to put on the agenda the fact that they will be asked to, you know, make a whatever change the order and we don't know what it is yet and then maybe we'll miraculously get to an agreement on the 14th and we'll have something So, so I think there's, so it, th there's like, maybe a clarifying question. Is one option just to ask them without any other context? Can we please have a 60 day or a 90 day extension to? Okay, I think that's something we'll need to do. The question is, do we add any context to that, right? By the 19th? Is that what you're referring to? Yeah, maybe we'll have some context, maybe we won't, but if we can just do, yeah, here's the, um, or, or even just, we don't know how long yet, we're gonna decide at our next meeting, but. I guess I was thinking that we know that we, we have some, we've had some good discussion about the 90 day thing and what we might ask for them in terms of what we would offer them and what we would come back with later. So I think the question is, do we need more time to just think through that? And I think the answer is yes. Um, so I guess I agree that we should put something on the agenda for the 19th, and we don't know exactly what that's gonna be yet, but it's gonna be an extension of some length of time to decide something. So two things. So, so one, um, if we're gonna do that, we should contact the council president like ASAP. Um, that's already gonna be a very long meeting for the council. We're starting that one at 5 p.m., which is an hour and a half earlier. It's gonna be almost entirely consumed by the town manager evaluation. Uh, there will be some regular business attended to, but very little. Um, if there's, there's no guarantee we can actually get on that agenda. We might already be too late for that, but if we want to try to get on the agenda, that request has to go in ASAP. Um, one other option that we haven't necessarily discussed, although Laura just hinted at that I was gonna bring up, even though I don't know if I necessarily agree with it, is, um, so we can ask for an extension, right? Like a student turning in a late paper and say we need 90 more days or, and, and then hope that we can meet that. The other option is we could go back and say, we weren't able to meet this, 
we have these great ideas. We don't know exactly how long it would take. Can you revise the order to just get rid of the 90 days and not replace it with something else? And then we decide our own timeline. It's you know, the, the 90 days was put there because it, it signals a sense of urgency, and I think that's a good thing. At the same time, I would also hate to say, we need 60 more days, and then 60 days from now we go back to them and say, can we just have like 15 more, right? To some extent, we might be a better, we might be able to better gauge how long we need, and so it might make sense to just go back to them and say, can we strike the time limit from, the, the, the time requirement from it, the order completely, and just say, will return initial goals, and then we decide when we're going to send those to the council. When you create a plan, my guess is you're gonna be creating a timeline, right? So that's gonna be part of what you're gonna be identifying. If we're gonna ask for time on the 19th, I think it needs to be very simple, and I don't, knowing the council, I don't think that would be simple to strike something that was discussed for a long time. So I would want it to be something much more vague for them to be able to say, yeah, we can do that, and go on. Can you clarify that you said keep it simple, and then you said to make it vague, and I think of simple as clear. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that, I mean, let's let Lynn figure out what the way to give us an extension to ask for an extension would be. We don't have to specify the way that the council will do it. it would be in our interest to give Lynn the motion and not just say, we want an extension, Lynn, figure it out. One, she might say no, because she has a million other things, um, but it's in our interest to, to, con to, to ask for what we want by actually, I would actually say we should literally send Lynn the motion we want the council to ask for. That would make our lives easier um, and definitely make her life easier. I would prefer that we just put a number in there and say we want a 60-day extension. Yeah, so, and, and I guess I would say that we should just make it 90 days, and if we can do it in 60 days, that's great, but that will give us one more sort of season of, of time Uh, my, just a little observation is that if you go to the council requesting whatever you request, they're seeing you all as the body that are the experts now, so they're not going to have big discussion around timeline. They want you to do that, so uh, is my guess. I mean, I know I have two council members here, but I thought that was the whole point of creating this committee was this is where the expertise lies, and that's what committees are meant to do is to be the ones that think these things through and then bring the recommendations to the council. So if you say you want another 60 days or 90 days, whatever you decide is gonna be more likely to, you know, to be approved because it's coming from you all as the experts of what you need. One twenty. <laughs> so, <laughs> he said 120. So, Evan, can you clear, so it, 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 could we ask Lynn today or tonight or whenever, like can we get on the agenda for the 19th to discuss the extension of the, or do we need to have the motion before we can make that ask? We can ask her, no, no, no. we can absolutely just ask her, is it possible for us to get on the agenda for the 19th? Um, to request an extension. Okay. Um, and she might say yes, she might say no. Uh, the packet is usually posted Thursday mornings, um, 
and so that would be the 15th, which would be the morning after our meeting. They'd like to have all of the materials by the Wednesday. Um, so if we have confidence that on the meeting of the 14th, we could hash out exactly what we're asking for, um, we could certainly send it at the end of our meeting and it would make it into the packet in time for counselors to see it. It's, it's tight, it, right? Um, and, we, and so then the question becomes, do we feel like we know how many days we want to ask for ahead of time? And I would, and I would you know, we kind of laughed at Jesse saying 120, but I would almost err on the side of ask for more time than we need because what I really don't want to do is then go back to the council in 60 days and say we need more time, which is why I offered the option of just saying can we remove that time requirement? And I kind of would echo what Stephanie's saying, which is that um, I never like to try and predict what the council's going to do. Um, but given that it was a constraint placed on us, we're seeing, yeah, I don't imagine a big fight if we're going back to them and requesting something. I think they're, they're going to give us what, what we want. Just to clarify, am I hearing that you think the most effective approach is to put something in front of them that is a motion that is essentially a yes or no question rather than asking to have a discussion at their meeting? A hundred percent. And I wasn't joking about 120. Well, are, are we, how do we feel about a 90 day? Could we agree on that one? So that puts us at November 18th. Hundred and twenty puts us at December 18th. So we also don't have to decide the number of days right now. We just have to decide, and I think we have, whether or not we're going to ask the council president if we can get on the agenda for, for the 19th. Yeah, I think we, I guess I sense agreement on that. Darcy, do you have any? Okay. Great. And we'll make sure that on the 14th, our main focus is determining what that motion will be. Okay, should we? Um, So, um, um, yes, I can do that, or Stephanie, you can I do that? I could do that. Okay. I could do that tomorrow morning, first thing. Great. Thanks. They may ask what the motion is, though. Is that? Okay. <laughs> like the night of? <laughs> okay. Okay, do we want to talk about the stakeholder engagement do document for 10 minutes or so, or how are people feeling? Maybe, Andra, do you want to go over it, and then have, we'll have time to digest it for next time? So um, what the request was to have something that we could hand to people who we want to talk to as stakeholders, um, saying who we are and why we want to talk to them and just have, I, I thought it'd be good to kind of introduce what we have agreed on so far and tried to put that in. Um, so, you know, it, may, it needs some wordsmithing. 
It was done rather late at night. Um, and the questions for outreach is sort of an idea that we had of doing a survey, um, but that it could also be a part of a sort of interview um, process. They're just examples to, you know, get us thinking um, and different kinds of questions for residents. We, you know, might ask some specific questions. Are you ever planning to get an electric car? What would, you know, what are the barriers that you'd have to under overcome? And, you know, we'll find out about barriers to charging and affording it and all that. And businesses could, could ask them questions about uh, if they've ever done a mass save audit and upgraded or, you know, did they use induction stoves? Just sort of get a sense while we're talking to them of sort of what's the state of activity already on issues that are relevant. Um, and then I took the liberty of writing out a timeline just so that I could see if it were even possible to do it in 60 days, I think. <laughs> um, or maybe it ended up being 90 days. Anyhow, the, um, I threw things in there, three forums in three different settings, um, a survey, joint meetings with some related committees, um, and then somehow kind of working in the timeline of the CCA at the same time. Um, and once we have something that we are comfortable with, we could start talking with people in August. So um, it doesn't have to be a final product. People could try it out. Um, obviously, wouldn't have the timeline on there um, or the questions. You know, it'd be a one pager. Thanks, Andra. Um, I thought this was really great. So thank you so much for doing it. I think it, to my point earlier, I think this made me feel like we've really done a lot in our meetings together and that we're, you know, you know, I think I would want to hear what others think, but, you know, I feel like we're, we're making really good progress. Um, and I guess I would like to see us potentially, you know, I think that we could discuss whether we want to put a carbon neutrality by 2045 or at this point just say we def, you know, we want to be carbon neutral between 2030 and 2050. Um, but other than that was my only comment that I, that I had, um, on it. That's easy. I'll do it right now. I, I, that was actually, so I, I think this is a really good document. What I, one of the things that I like is how you had sort of broader overarching questions that would be applicable to any stakeholder, but then also acknowledge that some stakeholder groups might have more specific questions, which I think is, is really cool because I think there's some things that we want input on from everyone, right? And then other things that are, you know, we're not gonna ask a, you know, a renter about barriers to developing solar on their new building, you know, anyways. Um, I, my one comment for questions is for the broad questions. I'd like to see a, 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 maybe one more question that's a little bit more focused on um, challenges or barriers. Um, it's mentioned in sort of the resident one, what barriers would you have specific to electric cars? Um, but I think, you know, um, I remember when, when Darcy and I were first started talking about this and, and carbon neutral goals and I talked to some business owners and all I had to say to them was carbon neutral and they could just list to me why it would be really hard for them to get there, right? And just giving them a space to um, list sort of what they see as obstacles and barriers uh, would be really useful. The one part that did confuse me is the part that just Laura just put out. We, are, we want Amherst to model innovative solutions that other towns could adopt to be carbon neutral by 2045. But we haven't set a, that, I read that as our goal is carbon neutral by 2045, but we haven't set a goal yet. Well, it came out of just, you know, 
or science-based. And that's basically what the science is saying now. So I chose 2045 to like try to beat the 2050 a little bit to be slightly more ambitious, but I'm fine with making it a, a range. Well, I, I would just strike that line. Because if we're arguing that we're doing stakeholder engagement to help set a goal, we don't want to seem like we're predetermining a goal that would seem to negate the reason for doing engagement before goal setting. Maybe put that we are looking to set a goal. Yeah, I think that would be an ambitious goal. <laughs> I want to. I think that dovetails a little bit with something, Steph, you had brought up at a previous meeting. Um, a lot of this assumes a certain level of education and buy-in already, and I think we need to just practice. And, and at the next level, I'd love to start thinking about what does this question look like if it's the first conversation on this topic, potentially. And there, I mean, there's a lot of, I don't know what the right word is, maybe education privilege going into this and I, we need to maybe we need help from someone else who can explain that um, or we can use our create you know figure that out and make these questions more egalitarian and back a step and both not not all of them I think different questions for different stakeholders So um, we don't necessarily have to agree on the questions. We could just go out and try out questions and kind of note what resonated with different stakeholders. You know, if, if we just sort of did practice runs ourselves with people who we know and said, you know, just let us, let me practice with you on the, you know, to, and they could help us formulate the questions for other people like them. Yeah, I, I think I see the most important thing for us to sort of agree with is the narrative around what our group is and what we want to get out of asking questions and what we want to get out of engaging with stakeholders, um, which isn't on here, but maybe that's something we can talk, we can add and talk about um, a little bit more. So I think because that will, I think that in combo, I think we have all the pieces other than that little, that piece, just making sure it's clear. Because um, the questions are coming out of some of the sector work that we've done. And um, these are great ones, you know, more generally. And then we, then I think we have all the pieces to start going out and having those conversations um, in different forums. Could you clarify, Laura, what, what, what you think is missing? Yeah, I, I think that we just want to agree, because uh, I'm assuming that we're not going to have all these conversations as a full committee. So I, I want us to agree on what the goal of, stake, of the outreach is. Like, you know, it may be as simple as we just want to make sure our, 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 our constituents are community members have buy-in and we've understood all their concerns like that could be it but maybe there's others I don't think we've like had a chance to really think through that yet could you like write that down for me I'll just like add things if people could yeah so um, I can do that <laughs> okay great thanks Darcy Okay. So, do, do, is it uh, how much um, consensus building do we still need around the narrative? If we just took that and, and kind of s sampled, you know, some 
people, like, what do you think of this? Does this make sense? Can you understand it? Could we do that and at this point, or is the committee not comfortable with, you know, put draft on it, but just try it out? As, is, does this communicate what people might want to know when we're asking them to talk with us? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. There's some minor edits I'd want first. Uh, so one, again, striking the line of the goal and just say we're looking to set goals. One of the other thing is uh, the, the line, we are a committee of two town councilors and seven residents. I would, this is so minor, but I'd, I'd rather see that flipped so the residents come first. Um, I always worry about town councilors having some like undue gravity in a committee that should be resident focused. Um, and there was one other, but I forgot it. So if I remember, I'll let you know. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't have a problem with us testing this out with people that we we know, as long as it's clear that it's draft. Um, I guess I envision sometimes we would make, we would hand this out and sometimes this would just be our talking points when we're talking with somebody. Um, so I don't necessarily envision that this would be like a handout we always gave to people. Um, oh, Darcy, did you have a comment? I, I, I think it's a really good idea to have something. Um, and I'm, I, could you scroll down to August, uh, Stephanie, just so we can see what, what um, <laughs> Andrew was suggesting that we do in August? Um, So she's suggesting each member have a discussion with a business owner and submit notes to the outreach work group. Which doesn't exist. <laughs> um, which might exist sometime in the future. So we'd have the handout and we would have the just what two or three questions that are on the previous page that we would ask the business and write down the notes and bring it back. Or, or you know, come up with your own question that you think gets at what we should be asking and that'll be very informative. I might, um, th I think this is a, it's a good first look. At, this might be something I might want to table for the, I know we had no substantive stuff at the retreat, but since this is sort of the narrative we're telling about our committee, and also since outreach is going to be really important and some of these questions are really important, um, it, it, it might be nice to have um, Andre bring a slightly revised document to the retreat and get people's input, um, because I think that the questions we ask people have to do a lot with like what we're looking for as a committee and, and what we're interested in. Um, and so it'd be, it'd be really interesting to get, to hear from other people about, is this the narrative of the committee you think and, and what additional questions um, would, you, would you add? I, this is, I, I wanna agree. I think it's a great document. I love the intention. It's really, I think it's always helpful to have these things to react to. I have a feeling the other people who aren't here would make it that much better as well. Okay, great. I, I agree as well. So potentially, um, I know you've already made notes. I'll send you these short notes that we talked about, and then we can have that in the packet of information we, we give to Russ. Um, and I actually think that this, if, if the beginning of our retreat is just sort of making sure we kind of all agree with this basic language in the beginning and what sectors we're dealing with, and we've done that, which is great. So again, I think we've done a lot better than we maybe we're giving ourselves credit for. Um, so 
Any topics or unforeseen items unforeseen? What didn't we? So get we through? need to um, the sector reports and the CCA presentation. I think the sector reports will see how they f feed into the retreat discussion. Um, So uh, you'll see my name on there because I wasn't here last week and I didn't write it before last week's meeting. Um, and I was also charged with doing buildings, which Andrea was charged with. And so I said, well, before I do mine, why don't I read hers? And I looked at hers and I went, well, this is so much better than what I would have come up with. <laughs> I don't know that I can improve upon this. So the one thing I did was develop the document in front of you, which you're probably wondering what this is. And it was, I thought, who are the stakeholders? And I made a list of them, and then I look at, looked at Andra's, and she had uh, the exact same list, so that was useful. Um, but I'm a very visual person, and so I sort of started to map out what does that look like, um, and where is their overlap? And so, um, you know, developers are a stakeholder, but right now, because so much development is mixed use, the commercial developers are also sort of the residential developers. So um, we might not have to, we might be doing commercial and residential together there, and to just sort of start to get a visual of, of what this might look like when we meet, uh, move on to outreach. So we don't have to talk about it, but I, I wanted to make sure you knew why you had this in front of you and I where it came I from. I didn't have one, so I oh. feel so <laughs> upset that I didn't recognize your beautiful picture because I am also a visual person. This is great. Thanks, Evan. OK. Okay, perfect. Well, then we've done, we actually did that agenda item, I would say. Cause, because cause our names Dwayne's are so here. close, that's why. Um, okay, great. No more public comment. And we've talked about the agenda for the retreat. And I think we've also been pretty clear that the agenda for the 14th is going to need to be very focused on the 90-day motion. And anything else, I think, that comes in the retreat. So I would move to finalize the agenda for our 14th meeting after the, at the end of the retreat. But that would be great because I'm gonna be away on the week of the next meeting, so I would wanna get it posted and everything on that Friday and okay. try to get you packet materials if you need them, but I think you'll probably have a lot of what you need already. Okay, great. Well, then I think the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Ashwin, for joining Thank you, remotely. Laura. Thank you. Thank you.